Good morning. Welcome to Bracken United Methodist Church. My name is Kathy Roden, and this is Kyle Lanford. We're your music leaders for worship. We would like to welcome you this morning. We have lots of announcements. They're located on our webpage. We also have a way for you to give virtually. We have a, a website dedicated for our prayers if you need certain prayer requests. It also has ways that you can continue to volunteer and be a part of our church community. Um, at this time, I invite you to find a candle, find a cross, place it on a special table, create the altar in your home, and then let us welcome the light of Christ into our sanctuaries. with me this morning dear Heavenly Father in this busy time in this busy season of our lives in a time where things can often seem chaotic and out of control we know that we can come to you as our shepherd we can be at peace as your sheep we can find calm we can feel your spirit. We can experience your grace. Help us to take that calm, to take that peace, to take that grace, and show it to all that we meet. In your loving son's name we do pray. Amen. a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see t'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour i first believed my chains are gone i've been set free God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy rings, unending love, amazing. my 
Hey guys, happy Sunday. Today we're talking about busyness and in our case, how most of the time we are a little too busy. So I have some questions for you. What are you doing to spend time with Jesus? Hi, Miss Nicole. Hi, everybody. I miss you guys a lot and I can't wait to see you soon. I'm spending time at home with Jesus by praying a lot and spending a lot of time reading my Bible. One of the ways that I'm doing that is by reading my Bible out loud and then sharing it with my friends and family because I feel that's an important way for me to keep connected to both Jesus and to my family during this time. When it what is a blessing from God you've seen recently? A blessing that I've recently had from God is just knowing that God has everything under control and even though I might be sad or scared or upset I know that Jesus is with me and one way he's shown me that is by the people in this church just their care and their love and the way that they've surrounded me with their, their hearts and made sure that I was okay that's really meant a lot to me Okay, and the last one, what are some things that you do to stay relaxed, focused, or not stressed? I like to cuddle with my puppy a lot. She really helps. But also I like to read. That's a good one for me. And sometimes what I like to do, I'm not a big journaler. I don't like to write my feelings and thoughts that way. But I like to make like poems and stuff. I wanted to ask you guys how you guys are keeping busy during this time. I know that this is a break from school and it's like an extra break from the summer and we can get a little bit sad and frustrated during this time. But um, as um, our pastors are talking about, Jesus is our shepherd and he's walking with us and keeping us safe and calm like shepherds do with their sheep. How are you staying calm with Jesus. So leave in the comments below, tell your parents how you are staying calm during this time. We would love to hear from you. Love you. Bye. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our Gentle shepherd, come and feed us, for we need your strength from day to day. There's no other we can turn to who can help us face another day. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. Hi everyone, I am Pastor.
Pastor Barbara Aziz, and I am so blessed to be here with you today. Uh, we are continuing our sermon series on Psalm 23, and it is titled, our series is titled, uh, Dear Stress, Let's Break Up, Wisdom from Psalm 23. It's not so much a how-to or a self-help, but it is definitely a way that we can rest in God's Word uh, during these really difficult times of, of high stress. So I invite you to uh, hear these words that David wrote from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Will you pray with me? Loving God, thank you so much for bringing us your word today. We pray that in all things you may be glorified. And so, Lord, help us to hear what you would have us hear. And allow these words that have been so beautifully expressed in the children's message and in the music, let them jump off the pages and transform our hearts. Lord, we do love you so, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. You know, last week, Pastor Don talked about the first verse, The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I want. There is nothing else I need. And today, I'm talking about how he makes us lie down in green pastures, and he leads us beside the still waters. You know, I've always loved this psalm from shepherd turned king David. Uh, it's almost always used at funerals or celebrations of life. In fact, if we do use it at a, a celebration of life, I always ask those in attendance to pray it as a prayer. It was written as a song, actually, but I love the communal aspect of praying it together as a prayer to bring comfort and healing for the grieving family. You know, it is so communal, and yet it's also so personal. And honestly, that's kind of how I feel about this pandemic right now. It's, it's definitely communal, isn't it? I mean, it's global. And uh, even though we're reacting to it in so many different ways, it's still caused from the same source. Our stress is still caused from the virus. And yet, as we sit in our homes with our families, or, or uh, by ourselves, it's so personal too, isn't it? Don't we all desire these promises of this psalm? Don't we all want that calm and that peace of green pastures and still waters? You know, these are metaphors that David used to describe uh, God's overwhelming love for all of us. Green pastures and still waters what might that look like for you today? It might not be an actual green pasture, because you know we live in Texas and there's fire ants. But maybe it is something else. You know, what does that look like? Where in your life do you need to apply this healing touch, this love from God for you? What is God revealing to you during these times of, of isolation? What can we learn about our relationship with God and with ourselves and with our loved ones, with our neighbors in this time of waiting? You know, I've been thinking a lot about busyness, how in the middle of my busyness, these metaphors of green pastures and still waters, they just bring me so much peace and comfort. Do you remember the good old days? You know, like seven weeks ago. Yeah, when we all complained about how busy we were, do you remember that? So, how are you? I'm so busy. I know, me too. Okay, bye. Yeah, 
that was the good old days. Now, I know that some of us are even more busy. For you parents who are out there that are still working, and all of a sudden you're the teacher, <laughs> and you have to entertain your children and feed them and basically make sure they stay alive, you're busy. But you're doing a good job, and I hope you know that. You know, there's some of us who are busy trying to maneuver through technology, and we're so tired of screen time. <laughs> It's a different kind of busy overall. And then there are those of us who used to be busy who maybe now tragically find ourselves without jobs, without employment, and we're worried about our families. There are those of us who used to be busy and we find ourselves with those who have lost loved ones to this disease, and you don't know how you're going to make it through the next day. See, I think that even though we desire green pastures and still waters, the journey to rest in God is sometimes awfully difficult. My friends, if you're finding it hard to be still on the inside, you're not alone. You're not alone. If you're finding that fear has gripped you, that it's even affecting your health, you're not alone. David wrote this psalm for a reason. You know, in all the hardship of his life, of his culture, at his time, there was this promise of God that spoke to his heart of peace and of comfort, of calm. You know, these words of David, they brought so much comfort to all the Israelites who followed after him. Who and as the scroll was unrolled, they heard these words of Psalm 23. Jesus was one of those that followed David who knew this scripture. He often spoke about the calm and the peace, not in, in lieu of suffering, but right in My uh, scripture that's been speaking to my heart has been Matthew 11, starting with verse 28. Come to me, Jesus says, all who are heavy burdened and weary, and I'm adding stressed out and busy, and worried and concerned about the future and he says come to me all of that all of you and I will give you rest and then he continues with verse 29 take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls he says in verse 30 for my yoke is easy and my burden is light Right? He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. My friends, in this time of COVID-19, I think there's so much we can learn about ourselves and others as we seek out green pastures and still waters, as we seek out God's love and peace and solace. There's a modern poet, David White, W-H-Y-T-E, and he writes in his book, Consolations, all about a word, a chapter, each word, and this is what he says a little bit about solace. He says, quote, solace is not meant to be an answer, but an invitation, an invitation through the door of pain and difficulty. Solace is an invitation to the depth of suffering and simultaneous beauty in the world that the speaking mind by itself cannot grasp or make sense of. In other words, solace invites us straight into that suffering, straight into that despair that we can't make sense of. He continues, to look for solace is to learn to ask fiercer and more exquisitely pointed questions questions that reshape our identities and our bodies and our relation to others. My friends, we are being reshaped, aren't we, during this time? And, and how uh, we answer questions and how we look at God in our lives, it matters more now than ever. He says, standing in loss, but not overwhelmed by it, right? Standing in the loss, but not overwhelmed by it. He says we become useful and generous and compassion and even amusing companions for all. I've seen it. 
all you who have stepped up and have served with your generous, your time and your talents, your compassion. And my friends, you've always been amusing to me. Amen. And then he says, but Solace asks us a very direct and forceful question. How do you bear the inevitable that is coming to you? And how will you endure it for years? I love these questions about finding solace and peace in the middle of a pandemic. How will we bear what is happening to us right now? And how will that Because we are being changed. You know, it, it causes us to shift our minds, to, to shift our hearts, to shift our very beings, our spirits. If we desire green pastures and still waters, then we must be actually able to go to a place where we can encounter those gifts of God. You know, I don't think that shift towards solace and peace has to be that complicated. I know I remember when my husband and I were so blessed to be able to visit Germany because we had family that, that lived there, and now they've moved back to Dallas, but okay, whatever. But Germany, my goodness, walking into these cathedrals, it would just take my breath away. And it caused a complete shift of my cells. And I would often just be filled with the Spirit. Now, we can't travel to Germany right now, but you know what? I felt that same shift in my mind and spirit when I listened to Andrea Bocelli on Easter Sunday. And he started singing the song that you heard this morning from our band, Amazing Grace. I was in the middle of eating lunch, and I had to set it down because I started crying so hard from the suffering and yet the beauty of that moment. Do you see what I mean? That shift in our minds. These shifts happen when maybe we are with our family members, when we hold babies, when we hear a worship song. These shifts happen when we cry with friends and we laugh so hard that we spit out our drinks. See, these shifts happen. Green pastures and still waters, they happen when we turn our attention toward God and all these gifts that God's given us. I just think it's amazing, this shift of hearts and spirits. Friends, I, I want to know when's the last time over the last six weeks that you have felt God speaking to your hearts. And if you want to put it in the comments, that would be amazing. But when have you felt God speaking to you during these times of distancing? A parishioner mom and both of the people I'm going to talk about gave us permission, but a, a parishioner mom of teens wrote that she was thankful that the virus has allowed her kids to do the things that they used to love to do before they were so busy all the time. She writes that without the rush from school to practice to meetings to games, they have time to be kids again. And they rode bikes all day. Isn't that amazing? You see, that was God talking to her spirit and causing this shift. Another parishioner who is retired and by herself at home told me that she has treasured this time. She's been reading her Bible more, and she's been praying intentionally more, and she hopes that all of that sticks for all of us. I just think that's God speaking to her. See, friends, God invites us to rest, to the quiet and the stillness within, to trust in God's mercy. And it's hard. It's hard because transformation is difficult. But my friends, always remember and say it with me, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside the still waters. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the ability to hear your word. And in these moments, Reveal to us, you, Lord, your spirit, your love, and your light.
help us, Lord, to continue to seek out these places of peace, of calm, right in the middle of the storm. Your beauty is everywhere. And we are so grateful. We love you so much, and we praise you for your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, we are grateful for your gifts to us during this time. We know that it may be difficult for all of us to uh, even know. We're grateful for your, your gifts, your offerings, your tithes, your faithfulness, uh, even the, the people that are coming yard work and and doing the music and doing the behind the scenes production work it's all an offering to god and so we thank you and uh we're just so grateful loving god thank you for all these people who help keep our ministry strong lord bless them as you have blessed us and and help us to continue to do what is good for you and your church. We do love you so, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise, let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see break down every wall we'll watch the giants fall or fear cannot survive when we praise you the god of breakthroughs on our side forever lift him high with our creation cry god we praise you Faith be a song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be a song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we pray. God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high, with our creation cry, God we praise you, oh, 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 oh. we praise you, oh, 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 we praise you, oh, 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 oh. we praise you. what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is
is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift you high. With our creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 God, with all your praise. Amen. Amen. My friends, that is your blessing. That in the middle of all that we are going through, let us continue to praise God. Praise God with every fiber of your being. Amen. Amen. Tradition of our church that we gather together and we sing God be with you. So join hands with your family or extend a hand out toward me and let us now sing God be with you. with you till we meet again by his counsels God uphold you with his sheep securely fold you God be with you till we meet again till we meet till we meet till we meet at Jesus Till we meet. 